Hello and welcome to the Renaissance Polymath. I'm your host, Toby Gagnon, and over the course of the next six episodes, I will be talking about preparedness topics. On this episode, I would like to discuss getting started in preparedness. Let's go ahead and get things started. Before we dive too deep, let's define that word, preparedness. Dictionary.com defines it as the state of being prepared or readiness, and Merriam-Webster.com defines it as the quality or state of being prepared. They also list synonyms including preparation, awareness, mindfulness, cautiousness, carefulness, alertness, attentiveness, vigilance, and watchfulness. Well, what does that really mean? To me, that means being alert vigilant, and ready for specific situations for both yourself and others. Basically, preparedness starts as a mindset. In fact, if you have car insurance or homeowners or renter's insurance or carry a battery bank to recharge your phone on the go, then you are already preparedness-minded and may not have even known it. I would like to stress something up front. Preparedness is not just an individual thing. It's a community thing. It's about your friends, your family, your loved ones, your neighbors, and your larger community as a whole. Les Stroud, a.k.a. Survivor Man, talks about what he calls his zones of assessment. The first zone is what you have on your immediate person. The second zone is what's within easy reach of where you are. And the third zone is what's further afield. To put that into perspective for your house, for example, think of zone one as what's on your property. Zone 2 would be your immediate neighbors, and Zone 3 would be the community in which you live, be it a neighborhood, town, city, or county. All right, so we've defined what preparedness is, and now know it's more than just a lone wolf approach. Okay, what could be specific situations where being prepared beforehand would be helpful? Well, First, consider that situations may fall into a few categories, including environmental, social, violent, nonviolent, vehicular, and medical. Of course, one event could span multiple categories and also change as the situation progresses, meaning what started out as a simple storm may lead to power outages, flooding, looting, medical emergencies, and possibly even fighting. Here are just a few examples of scenarios or events. A hurricane, a tornado, flood, fire, earthquake, contaminated water supply, a nuclear event, a supply chain breakdown, protests, riots, break-ins, burglaries, car accidents, plane crashes, kidnappings, anaphylaxis, animal attack, terrorist attack, mass shooting, heart attack or stroke, utilities outage, and the list goes on. Some of these things are scenarios we, as humans, directly control and cause. Others are completely out of our control. Also, consider that it is extremely unlikely that you will experience firsthand all of the scenarios I listed before. While you may not have any allergies, a close loved one might, and you may choose to prepare for that scenario knowing it's unlikely you will experience it firsthand. Conversely, if you live at the top of a mountain, a flood might not be something that makes sense to prepare for. Just because someone else plans for a specific event or events doesn't necessarily mean it would be a wise decision for you to prepare for the same thing. We all lead individual lives, so we should prepare as individuals with the greater community in mind. What I mean by that is only you can decide what is the most likely scenario or event to prepare for. And similarly to my messaging on digital privacy and security, you shouldn't let anyone else make you feel bad for preparing for that. Let's get into the mindset a bit more and start to think more critically about how prepared we already are. Consider what assets you already have. Things like knowledge, training, medications, pets or animals, Fire suppression, such as fire extinguishers, first aid kits, tools, currency, a network of family and friends, transportation, for example, a house, shelter, weapons, food and water, maybe some seeds to start a garden, utilities, cell phone, light, reference material, your mental and physical health. What other assets come to mind for you? Did you come up with what I believe is the most important one? A plan. 
Now, think about the scenario or event you'd want to prepare for first, the one you feel you're most likely to face. Would any of the assets I mentioned before, or that you thought of yourself, help for that particular event? I bet they would. Would everything I mentioned before help in that particular event? Likely not. A weapon probably wouldn't help if you were facing down a tornado, no matter what those southern rednecks tell you. Don't listen to them. However, if that situation devolves into riots, looting, and violence, a weapon may come in handy at that point. All right, so we've thought about what assets we may have. Let's talk about the thing people don't like to talk about. Liabilities. Let's take those same assets from before and talk about how they could be liabilities. Let's start with your house. Your house or shelter is an asset to you, but it may be too large to effectively defend or heat or cool. Your friends and family and pets, while very helpful, will mean you will consume your food and water resources faster. Any disabilities you may have could hinder your physical or mental abilities during an event. Those neighbors that you rely on for community support may be too large in numbers and too underprepared and thus cause a greater strain on your stored resources and or devolve into enemies fighting for the same resources. Your vehicle that you rely on may be unreliable or unable to transport you quickly and efficiently. Your vast food and water stores may not have been stored or preserved properly. That training that you took five years ago well, it may not have been taught by a reputable instructor and or the information taught is now out of date. All of those books that you think you can rely on for reference materials are on your e-reader, but you don't have the means to recharge it. You rely on YouTube for how-to videos, but you may not have internet access during the scenario you're preparing for. And don't forget about the two big elephants in the room, ignorance and complacency. Worse yet, you don't even have a plan for your most likely scenario. Okay, so I've officially scared you a little bit. Maybe that was intentional, but now that we've covered some things you can think critically about, what's your next step? Well, in my opinion, you should begin by brainstorming scenarios and events you feel you're most likely to face. Again, this is going to be unique to you, your network, and your community. Next, you'll want to research and educate yourself on specifics of each of those scenarios and how they may impact you and your area. Once you've done that, I would recommend developing a network of people and locations to assist during those scenarios. These can be difficult conversations to have, but you can begin by telling them the scenarios you fear and may someday face. It's human nature to want to help others, especially ones we care about. So don't be afraid to phrase things in such a way that they feel they're helping you out by being a part of this community and network. Once you have all those things in place, you should work with that network and community to establish a plan for each of the scenarios you've defined. This is where things can get bogged down, as it's unlikely everyone will agree on every point within that plan. I suggest being vague where you can but be detailed where you need to be. Once that plan is established, consider hosting or organizing events that will allow the members of your group to learn skills that will help during those scenarios. You can even start with a simple CPR, AED, and first aid class that is put on through an organization like the Red Cross. From those trainings and educational events, I would encourage you to work with the instructors to develop a list of, and ultimately procure, supplies that will help during the specific scenarios you are choosing to prepare for. I'll leave you with this last piece of advice when starting out. Don't rely on someone else to do your preparedness. You can maybe rely on some people to assist with the community aspect of your preparedness, but don't completely rely on them to prepare for you. At the end of the day, you are your most valuable asset your best first responder, and your last line of defense. So that about wraps up this episode, but I would encourage you to do your own continued research and education. I'll make sure to link to the things I discussed in this episode in the show notes. On the next episode, I will be discussing preparedness skills you need. If you have any feedback, please feel free to send me an email at 
podcast at therenpo.com. That's T-H-E-R-E-N-P-O.com. I would also appreciate it if you left a review wherever you podcast. That helps this show be discoverable to others and helps me understand where things can be improved. Don't forget to subscribe and auto-download new episodes so you don't miss any of the future topics. Thank you for listening, and I'll catch you on the next episode.